This topic is called transposition and it's all about rearranging equations. Quite often in GCSE it's called making x the subject. Um, I'm going to go for all of these and so let's get started and give it a go on the circle. We've got this, these formulas about the circle. Uh, the circumference equals pi times diameter and the area of a circle is pi r squared. These need to be remembered. And sometimes we'll be given the circumference and have to find the diameter. So we'll do this one first, make d the subject of the equation. So we've got c equals pi d. And if you look at this pi, it's pi it's times in d. So if I divide both sides by pi, That keeps the equation balanced, but these pi's cancel. So I'm left with c over pi equals d. So d is the now the subject of this equation. And that's the basic method. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. And you try to eliminate things from this side, so you end up with the thing you want on its own. So now let's look at uh, area equals pi r squared. Now, the best way to do this is get rid of the pi first, so we divide both sides by pi. So let's do that. So a over pi will leave us with r squared. And then you look at the opposite of squaring something. The opposite of squaring something is square rooting. If we square root r squared, we'll be back to r. And what we do to one side, we must do to the other. There we go, that's that one done. Okay, we've now got this formula. Volume of a prism equals the area of the cross section times its length. Now this is given on the formula sheet, so you don't need to remember this. Um, let's take a, a cylinder as a, a type of prism. There's length, radius there. And so the formula for this one, well we've got a circle on the end, so the cross-sectional area is a pi r squared, so the volume equals pi r squared L. Area of the cross-section times its length. If in this case we had to find the radius of this, um, make are the subject, we would, you can look at this and say, oh it's been multiplied by pi and it's been multiplied by L. You can move them one at a time. You can say, right, I'll divide by pi and do that and get rid of the pi first and then get rid of the L. But if you can see it, it's multiplied by pi, it's multiplied by L, so they go down the bottom here. Equals R squared. And then, just like we did before, we square root both sides. So v over pi l equals r. And just looking at this a bit more, if we had to find out, make l the subject, well all of this, pi r squared, is multiplying l. So you'd simply move that down to the other side. Yeah, divide it. OK, so that's how to work out the volume of a prism, rearranging that sort of thing. OK, now we'll look at the area of the trapezium, which is given by this formula. Half a plus b in a bracket times by h. It's the base and the top of it, and multiplied by the height, and it's half of that. So, say we've got to make h the subject, so we're giving the they give us the area, um, you've got the top and bottom and you've got to find the h. So I've rearranged it slightly, instead of saying half, I've shown the whole thing is a plus bh over 2. 
So first thing we'd do is get rid of this 2. So 2 is dividing, so we we'll multiply both sides by 2. And this is in a bracket. This bracket is multiplying h. So what we can do is move the whole lot in one go. So 2a over a plus b, and we don't need the bracket there anymore, equals h. And that's that one done. We'll do it now and have a look at it for, say, if we had to find out what a was, little a, this top figure here. So let's give that a go. OK, to make A the subject, first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about reverse bit mass. Imagine if you knew what A was, and you had to work out this A, the area. You would go A plus B, and then you'd multiply that by the H, and then you divide the whole lot by 2. So you move them in reverse order. Get rid of the 2 first, then get rid of the H, and then get rid of the B. So What's the 2 doing? It's dividing, so we make it 2a. What's the h doing? It's multiplying this lot, so we divide by h. And that leaves us a plus b. We've got one last thing to do, we've got to get rid of the b. What's the b doing to the a? It's adding, so we take it to the other side and it becomes minus. So our answer is 2a over h minus b equals a. I'm using the terminology take it to the other side. What I'm really doing is taking b away from both sides. But after a while you can start to think of this as going to the other side and doing the opposite. OK, now we've got these two formulas for the uh, cone. And again, you don't need to remember this. If you need it, it's going to be on the formula sheet in the exam. So volume of a cone, third pi r squared h. And it's a good way, I think, to recognize a third as being divided by 3. So it, sometimes it's a bit easier to write it like that. And we're going to make h the subject. So we're going to find the height of a cone and a formula for it. Um, and this would be a, a typical example. If you're actually given the volume and you're given the radius, well, this, in this form, this formula is not much good. You've got to rearrange it for h. So we're going to look at it in two subjects. See this here? That 3 is dividing this here. And this lot here is multiplying the h. So we can do it all in one go. 3v divided by pi r squared equals h. So now let's look at this other formula. The curved surface area of the cone, this bit round the top here, not the base, just this bit, is given by pi times the radius times this sloping length here, not the height, the sloping length. So supposing we had to find the radius in this case, so we're given the sloping length and we're also given the curved surface area. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call it. Uh, area again for this curved surface area equals pi r l. We've got to find the radius. Well it's been multiplied by pi and it's been multiplied by l. So we can go a divided by pi and divided by l. So we move the whole lot as a block equals the radius. Okay. OK, we've got this one now, the formulas around a sphere. So volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, and the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Both of these are given on the formula sheet. OK, I'm going to rewrite the volume of the sphere first. V equals 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. Um, I'm going to do it 
in steps this time. So we want to get 3 from this side. What's the 3 doing to this light? It's dividing. So we multiply both sides by 3. And now we look at this. The 4 pi is multiplying the r cubed. So to get rid of that we divide both sides by 4 pi. And then finally to get r on its own. Well the opposite of cubing something is the cube root. So we can write that as 3v over 4 pi put a little 3 in there to show it's a cube root equals r and that's that one done we we'll now look at the surface area So surface area a equals 4 pi r squared and I think we can all go in one go if you look at it we're going to move the 4 pi first and then what we're going to need to do is square root everything so a divided by 4 pi square root and that equals r Okay, we've got one last slot to look at, and that's the equations around a triangle. So we'll do that. We've got a few equations. The sine rule, the cosine rule, and this area of a triangle, half AB sine C. Typical triangle, we've got the sides labelled with small letters, and the corresponding opposite angles. Or capital letters. So there's a couple of things I just want to show you with equations. If you ever, ever have the sine rule which is a over sine a b over sine b equals c over sine c Sometimes it's useful to know that it's okay to just switch equations upside down. So you can write this. If you ever need to use a sine rule, you can also use this. Sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And if you move moving equations around, sometimes before you do it it's useful to just spin them upside down you've got to do all of them in one go mine and the reason it's useful say you wanted to find out what sine a is there well on if we well forget the, this side here say you wanted sine a you'd have to move that up to there that one up to there and then the b down to there because if you spin them upside down first all you've got to do is move the a up to here call it a sine b over b. Okay that's all I want to say on the sine rule. If we now look at this, the cosine rule, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Again it's given on the formula sheet but it's only any good if you want a, a on its own or a squared. What if you want actually to find angle a? You're going to need to rearrange this equation. We need to transpose it. So let's transpose this to get a. Well at the moment we've got a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Because this is a minus if we add minus 2 if we add 2bc cos a to both sides then we're going to get rid of it from this side. So that's going to give us 2bc cos a plus a squared equals b squared plus 
c squared and then what we'll do now is we'll get rid of this a squared so subtract a squared from both sides so we're left with 2bc cos a equals b squared plus c squared minus a squared and what we do now is this 2bc it's times in cos a so cos of a is going to equal b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc and our final step that's the cosine of a we actually want the angle a so we need to do cos to the minus 1 both sides so let's just put it up here so a our final answer is going to be a equals cos to the minus 1 b squared plus c squared minus a squared all over 2bc and that's that we'll have one look at the area of the triangle um, and see how that works probably work out what transpose it from b I think all right let's give that a go all right so we have the area of the triangle half a b sine c there's another formula which we won't look at at the moment which is half the base times the height but this is one where we actually know if we knew what the that angle there was we could work this out um, right so let's just put that down a equals and I'm going to slightly rewrite it again instead of doing a half I'm going to put it like this a b sine c over 2 well we're going to make b the subject so we're going to work it out for b 2 is dividing so let's multiply both sides by 2 and this b is being multiplied by the a and by the sign c so we have to divide both sides by a sign c and that equals b and there we are that's all the transposition that you should need for moving the equations around in GCSE there are a few harder ones and uh, I may well look at that but I'll put it in another video okay thanks for watching